Good afternoon and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Molly Keane. Coming up, the Tory party leadership race is heating up. Parking prices in Winchester rise again. And a local church is lit up for Green Week. They suffered a humiliating defeat in the general election. And now the Tory party is looking for a new leader in the hope that they can transform their fortunes. Before the membership are allowed to vote, the candidates must be cut down to two. Our political editor, Rhys Huggett, was at the Tory party conference to try to work out who will lead the fight against the Labour government. Today, four become three. The Conservative Party leadership contest heats up today as another leadership hopeful is eliminated from the contest. Tomorrow, Tory MPs will decide on the last two that will then go to the party membership. The MPs will be deciding between Robert Jenrick, Kemi Badenoch, James Cleverley and Tom Tugendhat. Local MP Paul Holmes has been involved in organising the contest and says whilst it has been tough, it has been a fair fight. So I'm a whip, so I can't declare an, in I can't declare a, an indication of who I'm going to vote for, but I, think one, but I think my biggest observation from the leadership election is actually how polite and clean it's been. One of the favourites to win is former Foreign Secretary James Cleverley. He's highlighted the need to urgently build more houses, so I asked him, how would he overcome local resistance against planning? And what I'm about to say might sound really superficial and thick, People are much less opposed to beautiful things than ugly things. And secondly, as I say, don't be, uh, don't be lazy. There's a lot of laziness that goes on in the planning uh, system, which is to say, it is easy to build out. It is easy to sprawl than to rise. That's laziness. Some newspapers have been speculating that Tom Tugendhat will be knocked out later today leaving Cleverly as the only centrist option left in the leadership race. The outgoing Tory leader had deep connections to Hampshire, being born in Southampton and educated in Winchester. Tory members in the area will be hoping that whoever wins, the issues facing Hampshire will not be forgotten. Rhys Huggett, Winchester News Online. Now, there's been a development in this story, so I'm joined by our political editor, Rhys Huggett, to find out a bit more. So, Rhys, what's happened? So, Paul Holmes, the local MP I spoke to, he's just come out supporting James Cleverley. And whilst this is going to give a boost to Cleverley's campaign, we still don't know if this is going to be enough votes. When can we expect to find out who's been cut? Well, voting's going on right now, and uh, it will close in an hour or so. And um, we'll find out at some point later this evening. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Rhys. OK, so there's less than a month to go before the presidential election in the United States of America. But how exactly is it all supposed to work? Maeve Corbett is here to tell us more. It's not the American election we thought we were going to get, but when Biden dramatically stepped down, it turned this knife-edge election into something truly historic. On the 5th of November, less than a month away, Americans will take to the polls to decide if the next president will be Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. So far, it's looking like a tight race, but many of the results are easy to predict. For example, Florida will likely vote for the Republican candidate and California will vote Democrat. However, there are always a handful of swing states who will often decide the election. One of the states in the spotlight this election is Pennsylvania, where Kamala Harris is ahead of Trump in the polls by less than 1% of the vote. Often it can come down to these few thousand voters who wins in the end. So what difference would it make for the UK, who becomes the 47th president? Well, although Harris' victory would be historic in being the first woman to hold the position, it would likely be business as usual in terms of foreign relations. A second term for Trump, however, would be far more unpredictable. His campaign and previous presidency have included claims to end the war in Ukraine in a day, contrasted with threats to remove all US funding from the war, high import tariffs, and a hatred for green investments such as wind turbines. The fight for the White House is being played out on social media and in rallies focused on the swing states, featuring celebrity endorsements such as Taylor Swift and Elon Musk. Even once the votes have been cast, the results can take a long time to come in. It may take days or weeks to follow the states as they count up the votes, but if one of the candidates decides to dispute the results, the next president could be decided by judges instead. I'll be keeping you up to date in the coming weeks. Transport is going to become more expensive for much of Winchester now, as parking prices are on the rise once again. 
James ba Baker has been finding out just how much it's going to cost. Just over a year since free overnight parking and cheaper Sunday parking ended in Manchester, the City Council has increased parking charges once more. From October the 1st, it will cost a further 10 pence per hour in central Zone A car parks, such as the Brooks, Tower Street and Corsac Lane. Whilst those who drive into town have this to deal with, how are others faring? Because we don't use the buses, we use the buses. As you get older, you can't always rely on the cars. And rising prices are impacting people's transport choices in Winchester. I was going to bring up my car to university to be able to go to the shops, find a job, but um, as a student I don't think I can afford it. Amidst the continuing cost of living crisis, even the small things are beginning to cost more. James Baker, Winchester News Online. South Gas Network construction in Stanmore will impact residents travelling to town, university and work. Charlotte Pashley covers which bus stops will be impacted. Cromwell Road, Sportsman Club and Stanmore Lane are all bus stops which will be impacted by Southern Gas Network construction in Winchester. This work starts from the 30th of September and will end on the 1st of December. This long period will impact locals in the Stanmore area. Um, normally I take them to work. It's been making me really late recently. They have published online that they tried to provide alternative routes for the buses around areas including Stuart Crescent and King Avenue, yet these alternatives were too narrow for buses to fit round. Raylene Road and Cromwell Road being closed, many cars would be diverted down previously quiet streets, impacting elderly people and students in this area. Just like this Stanmore cat, many people will have to be walking into town, to university and to work. Residents of Winchester have suggested that this construction work will be a big impact to them when it comes to travelling to work and going to university. But for many, they also suggest that this will not impact them. But in one way or another, the gas supply construction work in Stanmore area will impact locals. This has been Charlotte Pashley, Winchester News Online. Winchester pub goers will be pleased to hear of another one opening in the city. The Pizza Tavern aims to bring an Italian twist to the classic British pub. Lenny Teague headed down to get a slice of the action. It is known for its wide range of pubs, being named in 2021 by money.co.uk as the city with the 8th highest pubs to people ratio in the country, with one pub per 1,040 residents. However, that doesn't seem to have stopped more opening in the city. The Pizza Tavern was once a mobile business, set up from a tuk-tuk at another pub in the city, but it now looks to have found a permanent residence on Bridge Street. A unique idea created by Winchester residents Michael Smith and Freddie Frazier, the tavern aspires to be not only a place where customers can enjoy a refreshing beverage, but also an authentic pizza. Pub closures have been an issue recently, with more than 50 pubs shutting a month in the first half of this year according to government data. So yet another opening in a city that is already well populated is an ambitious idea. However, the Pizza Tavern aims to offer something different, and with it having opened last week, the owners are certain they can do just that. Uh, we're going to differ because we've got a sort of more authentic food offering, um, and you know we've been making pizzas for three years as a business now. Mike's got over ten years' experience of making pizza, and so our food offering is going to set us apart. Well, I think I started when I was 16, so I mean, I've been in this industry since then, and I've worked all the way from the bottom to the top as a KP, so I've seen every aspect of all parts of this business. I've even run bars and music festivals and things like that. So I've got a 360 knowledge of how to, how to operate and run a business, and I think being in that and living and breathing it all my life, I think that's, uh, that's something that I can bring that probably not a lot of other people can. The Pizza Tavern certainly looks ready to compete with its fellow pubs in Winchester and Michael and Freddie don't seem to be backing down from the challenge. The pizza-loving duo are certainly excited for what lies ahead, and the public seems to be too. Well, I'm happy about it because it's very close to where I live, and pizza's good. In a city that is heavily populated by chain establishments, the Pizza Tavern looks ready to compete as an independent business. Pizza lovers across the city have already enjoyed what they have to offer, and they will no doubt continue to do so. Lenny Teague, Winchester News Online. 
Other than occasionally noticing a butterfly or bee while you're out on a walk, how often do you pay attention to pollinators? Jade Edwards Lowe went to find out why beekeepers are urging young people to start taking an interest in these black and yellow insects. Sparshot College in Winchester was buzzing on Sunday as the Hampshire Beekeepers Association hosted their annual event, drawing in enthusiasts from all across the county. With honey tastings, candle making contests and expert talks, the event was a hive of activity and education. From golden jars of honey to intricate candles glowing with beeswax, the displays reflected the dedication and artistry of local beekeepers. However, the vast majority of attendees on Sunday were over the age of 50, raising concerns about the future of beekeeping. It baffles me as to why young people don't get involved in beekeeping. In my own age groups, I take kids in. Uh, just a week or two ago, uh, I took in um, 12 kiddies in three little parties from two years old right the way up to 14, 15 year olds. And they are absolutely obsessed with the bees when they go on in. They think it's awesome. According to the British Beekeepers Association, the average age of beekeepers in the UK is over 50, with less than 5% under the age of 40. This comes at a time when bee populations are declining rapidly. Without bees, many of the fruits, vegetables and plants we depend on could disappear. While the event highlighted traditional beekeeping skills, there was a clear call to action to inspire more young people to join the course. There is a, a young person's competition. Um, if, if you join a local association, you're then in the British Beekeepers Society and, and um, that can lead on to other things. And then there's honey shows. It's a good idea to go to honey shows because you get an idea of what it all involves. And, and people just think it's jars of honey. But you can look around here today and see that it isn't just jars of honey. Beekeeping may be an ancient practice, but it's clear that its future lies in the hands of the next generation. Into beekeeping is a sweet way for young people to help the planet while picking up a fun new hobby. Jaden Woodslow, Winchester News Online. As they face forest green rovers in a playoff chasing clash, as Joel Marriott talks us through the game. Eastley started off the day in seventh with one win in their last five and last game's result a 0 0 draw with York City as the Spitfires looked to get back to winning ways. Forest Greens hit third, three points off top, with three wins in their last five, with their latest win at home to Hartlepool. The game started slowly with neither side managing to get a hold of the game. The best chance so far was a poor clearance from Joe McDonnell, which was collected by Forrest deep inside Eastley's half. Joe went from zero to hero, pulling off a great save with a close range stop, looking almost certain to be a goal. Eastley's best chance of the game came from a free kick delivered by Chris McGuire, which was met with a glancing header by Niall Maher, which went narrowly over the crossbar, but nothing to challenge Forest Green goalkeeper Jed Ward. We finally got the first goal of the game in the 37th minute, coming from a Rory Delap-esque throw from Paul McCallum, which was met with by a Forest Green clearance, but only as far as Jake Taylor, who managed to nod the ball down to Maguire, who finished calmly. Not the best looking goal, but easily managed to go into the second half 1-0 up. That lead was short-lived, as the ball fell kindly to Charlie McCann in the midfield, who managed to find Harry Cardwell. A great first touch set himself up for scoring his first goal for Forest Green since joining them from Southend in the summer for a fee of £145,000. Eastley were determined to get back in front with a chance from Richard Brindley, but half of Eastley's supporters thought went in. Hopes of a lead were dashed as Southend's McCann, once again driving through the midfield, unleashed this effort which McDonnell could only parry as far as Tom Knowles whose effort was eventually turned in by Eastley's Jake Bokins. Things went from bad to worse for Eastley as Carl McAllister made a positive run towards the edge of the box, playing the ball square to none other than Charlie McCann, whose day got even better, slotting the ball past McDonnell and grabbing himself a goal to go along with the assist he got for the first goal. The two goal deficit did not stop Eastley from piling on the pressure to grab one back and potentially find an equaliser. With a flurry of three kicks and corners, Forest Green stood their ground and came away with a deserved 3-1 win to put themselves three points behind league leaders Barnet. Uh, you know, we conceded poor goals and when you concede poor goals, you don't win football matches. Um, got ourselves in front. Um, you know, we were in the ascendancy, went into half time in a positive mindset and, and thought we'd come back out second half and do the basics, basics wrong. Here's what the result does to the league table. Forest Green sits second, and despite the loss, Eastley still managed to stay in the last playoff place, one point in front of Halifax Town. For the Spitfires, their next game, 
they take on South End in some FA Cup qualification action, hoping to replicate their run from last year's competition. Joel Marriott, Winchester News Online. And up of the rest of the weekend's action with Elliot McVie. Winchester City are through to the next round of the FA Trophy after a 5-2 win against Swindon Supermarine. The last time these two met in this competition, Swindon ran out 5-0 winners, but it was Winchester who dominated this time around. A hat-trick from Tommy Wright and two goals from I.K. Hill rounded off a fantastic win for the citizens. They'll head to Devon to play Tavistock in the next round. Elsewhere, Basingstoke Town and Scholing were both knocked out of the competition, whilst Haventon Waterlooville, Gosport Borough and AFC Totten all secured their places in the next round. Meanwhile, higher up the leagues, Southampton continued their winless start to the season with a 3-1 defeat away at Arsenal. The visitors did take a shock lead through Cameron Archer, but Arsenal's quality eventually shone through with goals from Kai Havertz, Gabriel Martinelli and Bakayo Saka. The loss leaves Saints with just one point from their opening seven games. And Portsmouth aren't faring too much better themselves. They were held to a one-all draw at home to Oxford, meaning they're now the only championship team yet to pick up a win. In the National League, there was a goal fest involving Aldershot Town. Tommy Widrington's side were beaten 5-2 away at AFC Fylde. Not the results the shots would have wanted ahead of next week's big FA Cup tie against Bath. And finally, there were better results for our National League South sides. Farnborough earned a convincing 2-0 win against Averley, while Salisbury edged out a 4-3 thriller at St Albans City. The Winchester Sport and Leisure Park was shortlisted for the UK Active Awards. Rebecca Perez-Taylor finds out more. The Winchester Sports and Leisure Park were nominated for the UK Active Awards in two different categories, and this is the first time they'll be between the finalists. Uh, so this is the first time we have been shortlisted uh, for the UK Active Finals. Um, so yeah, it was a massive deal. We're all really excited to be a part of it. The Leisure Centre also hopes that with some improvement they will go on to win one of the awards in the following years. So obviously this year we didn't win, um, but to even be shortlisted uh, for one of these awards is super exciting. Like I said, to go from being one of hundreds to one of six is an amazing achievement. And we're really hoping that with the development of our activities, the schemes, the everything that we offer here, we think in the future we stand a good chance of winning. But do the people of Winchester think everything the Leisure Park offers is enough? Prices perhaps, I think student prices are discounts too, too much still. I think I'm paying like nearly 30 quid a month for a student price per month. So. Well I do, I bring my husband here, um, he uses the hydrotherapy pool because he's had a stroke and quite disabled as a result of it. And the disabled car parking spaces, they could be a bit wider and there could be more of them. That, that's really the only thing I'd change. The people of Winchester and the UK Actor Awards gives the Winchester Sports and Leisure Centre a reason to improve the facilities and become one of the best. Vivica Berethaylor, Winchester News Online. A local football group is going under expansion. Elliot Norton headed down to Bar End to learn more. Winchester Sixes started with three friends playing six aside. It is now an independent organisation that is going from strength to strength. Now operating independently from the university, Sixes has been rebuilt from the ground up. And now with new captains, the next stage of their plan begins. This team gave me a sort of friendship group, it gave me a sort of social social network that helped me a lot like in a new environment. Yeah man, it's a really big honour. Um, it's something that I feel really passionate about, it's something that's, you know, I really enjoy, so yeah, it's a real, really big honour, something I hold, uh, you know, I take good pride in, yeah. New season, new goals, same sixes. The group is looking to build on a strong last year as they look to expand by adding a new competitive aspect. As well as this, they have plans to continue building their welcoming community. Got a lot, got a lot. So we're planning on getting a kit within the next month or so, so then we'll have branding, we've got a sponsorship deal, almost agreed now, and uh, we'll be playing, uh, we'll be scheduling fr friendlies against other universities. So that would be good, so we're going to introduce a different, more competitive aspect for some of the lads. Yeah, again, it's um, it's really awesome, it's really nice to see Sixers growing. Um, yeah, something again, I take massive pride in um, seeing Sixers grow like this and seeing people coming and enjoying the same thing that I enjoyed in my first year. So yeah, it's really awesome. Sixers is comprised of 30 players not in the university team. 
Despite this, they are now looking ahead to their first competitive match. They are aiming to play teams from other universities, such as Solon and Bournemouth, as their own unique entity. Elliot Norton, Winchester News Online. And that's all for sport. Back to you, Molly. Thank you, Emily. In celebration of its 50th birthday, an historic church in the heart of Winchester held a light show reflecting on creationism and sustainability. Alexandra Stapleton went along to see the illuminations. Last week, an installation was held at the United Church in Winchester with mesmerising lights showcasing the wonders of creation. The downstairs party reflects on the theme of space and then upstairs is, is Earth and also to, to, to try and um, to help people think about how special it is and how, how precious it is, which is, of course, the key theme of Green Week. The Wonders of Creation was produced for the church's 50th anniversary in affiliation with Winchester's Green Week. In a way, yes, it makes you think of what a tiny piece we are in the, in the whole world and the Earth is such a tiny thing in, the, in space. I thought it was really interesting to see how the darkness was being lit up in different places and how it was completely different from our usual experience of that space. That was the thing that grabbed me first of all. I think it just makes you feel much more that you want to look after the earth and what's in it. I think it's really motivating. Having witnessed the beauty of both the church and the light exhibition, showcasing the universe and its many wonders, will this help to inspire us to be greener? This was Alexandra Stapleton, Winchester News Online. With student loans, the cost of living crisis and paying out for freshers events, there is no denying that being a student can get expensive. And now, Winchester's, Winchester's Student Union has introduced a new fee for society members. Rebecca Johnson can tell us more. Societies, a fun way to get the most out of your university life. But as of this academic year, the Winchester Student Union has added a participation fee due to budget cuts. But will that cost be the tipping point of missing out on fun experiences? So we actually started the very end of 2022, 2023-2024 year. So unfortunately, everyone was already settled in their societies. It was exam season. We only had four weeks before the end of the year. It was really difficult for people to come along. Um, we put posters in every building. K-pop is usually something you can find everywhere. And you usually just want to gather around with people, but knowing that you have to pay a certain fee for just sitting around and enjoy in the community. It is still fun, but the idea of having a community where you just go around and look at videos, the participation fee can lose that interest. Mommy, have you had a good I just kind of like hand the baton on to like, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, activities and coordinations. Um, I don't have access to any of the participation funds. Due to the unfortunate budget cuts of 23%, the Winchester Student Union has added a five pound minimum participation fee. But will this participation fee cause most of our beloved scientists to tumble down? Rebecca Johnson, Winchester News Online. And finally, September was a mixed bag of weather across the country. But how much fell in Hampshire? Weather expert Kieran Tibbet breaks down all the stats from the past month. It's now settled in, bringing waves of unsettled weather, cooler temperatures and the nights drawing in earlier. For much of the UK, September was the wettest on record, particularly in counties like Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Wiltshire, which all recorded three times the average September rainfall. According to Southampton Weather, 166.7 millimetres of rain fell in Hampshire last month. This led to flash flooding in some areas, as well as widespread travel disruption on both road and rail. According to Met Office statistics, it's been the wettest September since 1918 for southern England. For the UK, the month began with average temperatures for the time of year, before they began to drop as Arctic air moved in with the bands of low pressure. These colder temperatures stretched across much of England and Wales, reaching just 12.7 degrees on average, a drop of 0.3 degrees for the time of year. Whilst Hampshire had its share of settled weather and blue skies, the mean temperature for the month dropped to 13.6 degrees, 1.1 degrees less than the monthly average, according to Southampton weather. As the days get cooler and we creep closer to the winter months, 
Met Office Long Range Forecasts predict temperatures to drop once again as we head through October. However, more settled weather and sunshine is on the way for Hampshire and southern England, with showery spells also expected to continue throughout the month. That's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.